I am James Swanick, and today we are talking to Russell Belcher, who is a 44-year-old father of four. He's Australian. He's a fellow Australian like me. He's the general manager of an Australian food processing company in regional New South Wales, which if you're not from Australia, um, New South Wales is one of the states of Australia. It's south of Queensland where I grew up. It's on the east coast of of Australia. And uh, Russell, as of right now, today, as we're recording this, is 144 days alcohol-free, which is four months and 22 days. And I'm pretty sure he's feeling pretty good. Russell Belcher, great to have you here, mate. How are you feeling? Thanks, James. I'm feeling great. Really good. Thank Why you. are you feeling great? Like, what, what's what, what's the difference when, from when you were drinking? Uh, well, it's I think it's about 11 o'clock our time. I would still be normally, um, you know, under the stresses of work, I'd still be fairly hazy and foggy. It's not until you get through lunch and get something uh, in your tummy um, that you start feeling a bit better. But... Yeah, I would still be feeling the effects of the night before, uh, back when I was sort of drinking. So, yeah, still fairly foggy at this time of day. But um, at the moment, I feel clear and um, feel great, yeah. And what were you drinking and how much were you drinking? Maybe just talk us through your drinking habits Mm -hmm. before you ended up quitting. Yeah, look, uh, uh, you know, I had a soft spot for bourbon. Um, Didn't really go much on beer or anything else, but... Bourbon was sort of my choice and, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I would sort of, towards uh, the end of uh, my drinking journey, I was sort of drinking, you know, probably, you know, six of them a night, you know, pre-mixed cans. Um, and I, I'd i go for bang for buck, so I'd sort of hit, you know, 10 percenters, 12 percenters uh, of these pre-mixed cans. So... And I kept going up. I started at 4.8, go to 6, then into 10 and then 12 because, you know, after a while the it, it was, you know, not only costing me more but it would, um, the effects wouldn't be there. So you get, you'd hit something a bit stronger, you know. So, yeah, it was really um, those type of drinks were really knocking me around towards the end, yeah, for my health. So. Yeah. Well, we want to um, talk a bit about what the results have been of you being four months and 22 days alcohol free in a little bit but just paint a picture for us just tell us a little bit about your life and where you grew up and what you do and married life and being the father of four kids just tell us a little bit um about yourself russell and i might just ask you just maybe speak a little bit closer into the uh, microphone if you can just so it comes out a little bit louder thanks mate can't get too close there's no filter on the zoom is there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Jeb, my story is a, my story is probably a little bit boring um, in that uh, there's really no profound sort of um, changes in my you know appearance, so to speak. But you know, in in terms of my past and you know my family, life, I'm a Brizzy boy, born and raised. I moved for those who don't know what Briz- for those of you who don't know what Brizzy is, um, Brizzy is, stands for Brisbane, which is yeah. the the city that I grew up. At grew up in in the state of Queensland. So you'll probably hear some Aussie slang during this because we'll go, oh, I'm a Brizzy boy. Just means I'm from Brisbane. <laughs> yeah, so the west side, so, you know, Springfield, Ipswich um, is where I grew up and um, spent, yeah, um, all my life there uh, except for these last six and a half years that I, I moved down here, uh, career move, after a failed marriage. <clears throat> had two two beautiful kids to my previous wife. Uh, she was my um, high school sweetheart. Uh, we were together for around 20, 22 years, something like that. And, um, yeah, we, we parted ways. Um, I moved down here as a career change and um, met uh, another young lady and we've had two kids uh, since then. So um, back uh, back earlier in my, uh, in my time, I was a, um, and probably before my drinking days, I was a proficient uh, race car driver, so, uh, you know, I drove a lot of race cars and uh, that was my life for, for a very long time until sort of money um, money, and, you know, career sort of um, sort of ran out of time and, and ran out of money um, with two kids and then sort of uh, breaking up and uh, getting divorced uh, didn't go well with the, the finance side of things, so, yeah. 
Uh, it was then that I sort of hit the bottle, I guess, if you like. Yeah. So was that um, was when you say hitting the bottle? I, I'm assuming you mean kind of like your drinking habit started to increase mm. noticeably. Was Definitely, that? Yeah. Yeah, was that after you'd moved down to New South Wales or was that immediately after the, the, the ending of your first marriage? Like what phase of life did you notice that it went from kind of like, ah, just being kind of a, a non-threatening habit to all of a sudden being noticeably detrimental to your life? Yeah, well, I'd never been a big drinker. I didn't like the taste of it. And, uh, and, and with my racing and the cars, I never had time to drink. And, I, you know, I had to be sort of like an athlete so I was always clean never did drugs never did any of that growing up so um wasn't until after I stopped racing and then through the divorce that I, I um well actually prior to the divorce I was a social drinker so I, you know I would drink on weekends and you know sometimes but if I didn't have it it sort of didn't worry me once the divorce sort of took effect then um I really hit it pretty hard um and it went from zero to 100 really really quickly um and look, I may have had a problem before that, but um, that's the point in my mind where I sort of I knew that um, things were were a little bit different, and my 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 intake was certainly increased. So yeah. So when you yeah, noticed yeah. that your intake had increased and you became aware of it, um, what did you try to do to to change it, if anything? Yeah, at that point, I, I didn't do anything because I was still, I, I didn't realise, uh, I didn't realise exactly how big my problem was uh, or if it was a problem. Um, and uh, look, I would, uh, I would not, you know, I would sort of not, I'd sort of drink on social outings and stuff, but most of the time I, I drank at home. Um, and it felt good, you know, so I didn't really think it was a problem, you know, in, in those early stages. Wasn't till I started sort of climbing the ladder in my job and stuff, and things started to get stressful. And um, then that's when I really, that was when it was really profound. And sort of, I sort of figured that, um, yeah, my intake was like it went from, say, for example, drinking on Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, pretty hard to. I have one Monday, then it'd creep into Tuesday. So before too long, I was drinking every single day, you know, and, um, yeah, it, it was really starting to hurt my, not so much my health, but my, you know, my productivity, my my family, you know. That's that's the real, that's, that's what hit the hardest, you know, yeah. And how did it hit your productivity and how did it hit your family? Well, yeah, with family, um, what I found is um, particularly, you know, starting again at, you know, the age of, you know, 38, nearly 40 with a, with a brand new family and, and two, two kids, two young babies. Coming to New South Wales, we didn't know anyone. We didn't have any friends here. You know, family and friends were 1,200 kilometres away. We didn't know anyone here. Um, you know, my wife, stay-at-home mum, everything was sort of on my shoulders to to keep us going um, in terms of the work and the financial situation. Um, but what I found is that I just wasn't present. You know, I just wasn't, I wasn't enjoying those opportunities with my children. I didn't look forward to them. All I looked forward to was that, was that escape of that, you know, having a few drinks. And, and in fact, you know, I, I'd get to, you know, say one, two o'clock in the afternoon and I, and I would, well, you know, I've only got a couple of hours left to wait until I crack that first drink because that seems reasonable, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I wasn't really present for the first couple of years of them being born. I, I did what I had to do as a father, as a provider, but I didn't go above and beyond the way a good dad should, you know. Um, yeah, and that that's what really – and that sort, of tra- that sort of also transferred into my relationship with my wife because she could see that I wasn't – totally present she, she'd never really raised that with me she'd have a go at me every now and again about my drinking but she would never really uh, bring it to the front of the table you know and say look you've got a problem you need to do something you know, because I, I'm not an aggressive type of uh, drinker or anything like that I, I sort of like to be left alone when I was drinking but but I would I would in fact you know say some silly things or stuff that was out of character um, so that's when things would sort of um, escalate 
uh, between me and her and um, she, she could see some changes there when I was drinking in my behaviour and stuff. So, yeah. You sent me a photo uh, just before we, we started speaking here and, one of the, uh, and the photo that you sent me is a, is a photo of you with your daughter, Harmony. Um, I'm not sure how old she was at the time, but do you want to just explain and describe that photo and what you notice about it? Yeah, I think that photo sticks out. I, I don't have many photos of me, you know, sort of drinking and partying, but that one stood out to me as I was clicking through, uh, through because she's about, I think she's about three there. Anyway, um, I'm standing there drinking and, and she looks as though she's trying to get my attention, but I'm, I'm another world away and I'm not even looking at her or acknowledging her, you know. Um, and that, that stood out to me because I felt that that's sort of a representation of the father I was when I was drinking, just not being present. Um, not enjoying the moment with your kids, and uh, and I, I do regret that. I, I really do. When you said that your wife um, had a go at you about your drinking, what kind of things would she say, and when would she say them? Uh, it would normally be after I say something silly, you know, or or it would normally be um, how would it would normally es- escalate would. Would be that I, I would I would raise something that I would never normally raise, you know, while uh, not under the influence, you know. Therefore, um, that would be totally out of character for me, out of the blue, and she would react to that. And then before you know it, we're sort of in a stout show. Um, it would be, you know, during that conversation or the next day that she'd say, you've got to stop drinking, you know, you're drinking too much or peel it back a bit, you know, dial it back. Don't drink as much as you are. Because I was sort of the all or nothing type of guy. Like I can't have one or two. That's just not in me. I'm just all in. So, you know, I'd get to a point where I'd have a skinful and I would um, just keep going until I, you know, annihilate myself, you know, go to sleep, wake up uh, the next day, sleep in, uh, and then be foggy for the next day, not wanting to go out or do activities or have family time, just sort of, climb back in my cave and just leave me alone, you know. So, you know, uh, an afternoon's worth of drinking would turn into, you know, sort of two days and not being present with, with my family. So, And then you mentioned it was affecting your productivity at work as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, we're, look, I, I, I sort of think I'm sort of super, uh, superhuman, you know, in that regard. And I think most drinkers probably are because, you know, to get through what I what I did and to, to achieve what I did, even while I was drinking the way I was, it's it's really re- remarkable to be honest. But what what it, what stood out for me is that well, if I can achieve what I'm achieving while I'm while I'm drinking, uh, what could I achieve when I'm not? You know, um, and get you know sort of let off the chain and 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 do what I, what I should be doing and, and achieve more things. You know, but. As I said, you know, before prior to twelve o'clock, prior to midday, like I'd be, I'd, I'd be there, I'd be there in spirit, and I'd be making decisions. But were they the best ones? How much revenue did we lose? You know, how much, um, you know, downtime? You know, just through silly um, choices or mistakes that I that I I would make um, because I wasn't clear and I wasn't present in that moment. You know, and. As a team leader, uh, leading you know a couple of hundred people, um, it's unacceptable. Yeah. All right. Well, we're about to get to the benefits you've experienced from being consistently alcohol free. But firstly, like, was there a moment where you decided enough is enough? Was it um, a period of time? Was there an incident? Was it just something that you've been thinking about for a year? Like, what was the moment or the phase? that finally got you to take action and what was the action that you took? Yeah, um, so, James, what for me it was I, I I had known the last couple of years I was really conscious of my the amount I was drinking per day and I was conscious of how much that was costing, not only my wallet and but, you know, productivity-wise, my career, my health. Um, but I continued not to do anything about it. So if, if you like... You know, a, a typical day for me would be, you know, getting to the end of the, the end of the, like you know, probably ten or twelve hours a day uh, at work. Then you know, probably four hours of drinking, and then trying to squeeze family and and all the rest of that into it. Um, 
But what I found, James, was that um, I would go to bed, I would sleep really good for about four hours, then I would wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I could not get back to sleep. And I was, I would do, that That happened for so long, like more than I can remember, you know, probably a year or two that, I, you know, yes, I would get to sleep and it would be great, And but I'd, I'd wake up continually every single morning at 2 or 3 o'clock, one to go to the toilet, but then I couldn't get back to sleep. I'd, I'd then wake up. But when it was time to wake up, I couldn't wake up, you know, so I was a zombie for the first six hours at work because I just hadn't had enough sleep, you know. So I went, you know, going through those stages and it was really starting, as I was sort of getting older, it was really starting to take its toll on me, you know. And I I was sort of just scrolling through Facebook um, and your ugly mug popped up. <laughs> anyway, I clicked like on it and, you know, the Facebook thing, you know, it'll, it'll – um, takes note of that so it keeps you know pushing stuff into your feed anyway you just kept popping up and and i think i flicked you an email to get some more information about the uh, the p90 project 90 um program um i think then we had a call and i think the second call where we where, where we discussed the program i think you you actually that was the 23rd of april that was a thursday and then the 24th i had my first call and I was alcohol free from the 24th. So, yeah, uh, it was big, you know, and I just jumped straight in with two feet and, um, and I was all into that. So, and haven't had a drop since. Yeah, amazing. And, and yeah. I don't want this to be like a, we just tell everyone how great Project 90 mm. is. And yeah. so, but I, I'm just curious, like, what, what was, um, effective about going through that process that maybe you know you doing it on your own previously mm. you know that hadn't yeah. worked what was it about going through this process that made it work well okay if, if you know i re- relate this to you know those early mornings being awake and not knowing why you know at two or three o'clock in the morning and i i, I would tell myself every single day that i'm not going to drink tonight I'm not going to drink tonight. I'm not going to drink tonight. I'm not going to do it. And every single day, I would, you know. But every single morning, I would say that. And it got to the point where um, I tried a couple of times. So, okay, I won't drink during the week. I'll just drink on the weekends. And you find yourself just longing through it through the week, you know, and you're just, you know, abstaining from it. And it's not fair because you can't drink. That brainwashing, you know, I couldn't do that by myself I couldn't get that out of my head you know um when I joined the group um yeah it was a little bit I was a little bit scared to be honest you know um I'm not a I would put it this way what was attractive about the program was that in a small regional town in New South Wales I could not walk into a meeting an AA meeting or something like that and have everyone know who I was I just I couldn't do that so I I liked the program because it, although I know a lot of people now through the program, yeah, I had that sort of anonymous type. No one knew who I was, so I could be completely open. I could be myself. But I would say uh, what was different about the program as to trying to do it myself is that there's some key fundamental um, systems and processes there that um, that are easy to follow. Um, there's a camaraderie with with the team and other members. That you just can't get, and and you can't get that. I, I certainly couldn't. I couldn't get that from my wife. I, she didn't understand. She's not a drinker. But that camaraderie in the group, and it's still there now. Even you know, I, I finished uh, P90 a long time ago, but it's still there through through you know other platforms. Um, and I've made friends for life through that. Um, but that it, it's kind of like you know going to a uh, personal trainer and or a group training thing you know you when it's in a group you always want to try harder you know you, you I'm competitive so I, I you know I wasn't going to be the one that got on there and said I've, I've had a drink you know I wanted to see it through so that there, there's all those type of aspects that um really helped me um succeed through that through that 90 days there was there were some tough times you know there's no silver bullet but um I found 
leaning on some of those uh, other team members was really helpful for me and, and it's fantastic. So what did the process teach you or what did you learn from the process about yourself? <clears throat> and then I want to ask you, you know, what, what were some of the benefits that you, that you felt and saw and more particularly what other people saw as well? I'm curious about what, you, what your wife said or what other people that, that know you have said about your change. So <clears throat> there was a few questions in one, but, um, yeah, yeah what, what, did you, what did you learn about yourself during the process? I think the most profound thing I learned, um, because in, in the program itself, the, the, there's members from all over the world. What I learned was that I'm not special, that I'm not crazy. You know, um, every single other person was going through exactly the same thing I was. And I see people going through the program now that through different stages, that was exactly the same as me. So they were thinking the same way, they were They've done all the same things that I did, you know. So I learned that um, it's it's not you as an individual that has this problem. It's you know it can quickly uh, um, sort of what's the word? It can quickly swallow you up with you, your own thoughts about you being dysfunctional or, or whatever. But it's it's really true that. Uh, Although you may not know, a lot of other people are going through exactly the same thing, but they just don't share it, you know. And in that in that group and in that, um, that P90 program, um, I really learned that. And that was probably the biggest takeout from, from that program. Um, the effects and, 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 and what people see now, I guess, uh, probably haven't seen uh, all of the benefits because of COVID. It's sort of been locked down, but... Um, you know, a lot of my friends, <laughs> they joke and they say they want the old Russell back. That's only because um, I'm a bit of a joker, you know what I mean, and I'm fairly jo- jovial and uh, they, they were afraid that, uh, that I would lose that, you know, but I haven't lost that. That's still in me, you know, but um, I get a few drinks in me and that's, you know, it's um, exaggerated, you know, by 100. But, um, yeah, that's been the biggest thing is that um, I'm still the same. And uh, people have recognised that, you know, um, they just can't believe I don't, I don't drink anymore, you know. So, yeah. And my wife, same. So, yeah, coming home earlier, spending time with the family, family activities on weekends, just waking up and being able to do that has been, you know, great, you know. So, yeah. Um, when, you, when you were mentioning Harmony before, it should, I mm-hmm. think she's five and you have another uh, child who's six years old, I think. Yeah. And you have some older children who are 18 and 17 from your first marriage. Yeah. But um, um, do they live with you? I'm assuming you're only with the five-year-old and the six-year-old. Is that right? Yeah, Harper and Harmony down here with me and my, my yep. oldest two are back in Brisbane, yeah. Emerson yeah. And so with Harper and Harmony, your, your um, six-year-old and your five-year-old, how has your relationship or your presence or your connection changed with them since you've been four months alcohol-free now? I would say it's changed just just due to the time that I'm spending with them and the activities that we do. I I really think yeah, you know, kids are really smart in that regard, um, and I think they really they do know, you know they do understand, and they do pick up that uh, those vibes. You know that that dad's here, and you know so I'm flat out now to be honest. <laughs> you know they drag me off to ride bikes and. You know, throw rocks and do all types of silly things, but um, but it's great, you know, because you know I I'm sort of getting to do that again, you know, and um, I'm getting to be a bit of a kid myself, you know. <laughs> um, also, the important thing is I was so busy at work with my first two, and you know, trying to build my career, even though I wasn't really drinking that much back then, um, that I missed some of those times with my my oldest two, so. You know, to have that happen again would be an absolute shame, you know. So I'm really glad that I sort of came across the program and that, you know, I, I took the steps I have to to capture, you know, these early times of their life and, and be present in them. So. Yeah, wonderful. Um, how about your work and your productivity? How has that shifted? Hmm. And also um, relationship with your wife who was probably 
you know, like she she said a few things about your drinking, right? Mm-hmm. So so how's work shifted, productivity, and then how's your relationship with your wife shifted? Well, look, um, the work things uh, it is difficult because um, <laughs> since being alcohol free, I have been really tested you know um, there's been a few changes at work changes within the company um i would say the last three months have probably been the last yeah been the hardest of my whole career um but what's different about that is being alcohol free uh if i hadn't have been alcohol free those problems issues whatever would just be compounded by the fact that I feel insecure, I don't have confidence, I can't make decisions, you know. But I've been able to get through this period alcohol-free and remain alcohol-free um, and come out the other side. When I say come out the other side, it's not all over yet, but, it's you know, I'm sort of still going through some things there. But I am in much better shape to, to take anyone on than, than what I would have been, you know, six months ago. So, um that's it's been a big game changer in terms of my career. Um, it's also got me looking outside of my current you know, current sector that I work in, and you know, what can I do in terms of investing? What can I do in terms of you know building other businesses? What could I get into outside the the industry that I'm in now to um, you know uh, open up some new doors? So I'm really looking forward to the future. I think that um, there's more that I can do. There's more that I can offer companies and people. Um, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. My wife, she's hard work, you know. <laughs> she's always been hard work, you know. So, um, but she, oh, look, you know, she's okay. She's 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 a good wife, you know. She 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 works hard, you know, with kids and stuff, and um, she she is a good person. You know, I I haven't acted the way I should as a husband, you know, during the, uh, you know, drinking alcohol and things like that. However. You know, we, we always have our ups and downs. We have our ups and downs now even being alcohol-free. But what I will say is this, um, I've got better comebacks now that I'm more clear, you know. <laughs> I've got better arguments now that I'm more clear. You know, I would normally cower and just give in, you know. Uh, but now I'm, I can stand up to her, man. <laughs> I'm more clear and present in the argument. And, uh, yeah, I'll put my uh, my arguments forward. <laughs> but, no, it is much happier, mate. It is uh, It is a lot better. Feel a lot better in myself, a lot more confidence, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly sure that she's seen that. Even though sometimes she won't admit it, which is pretty hard. Yeah. One of the things I really liked was um, inside of our Project Ninety program, we have this uh, this uh, this phone app where you can send little video selfies to to one another to other members in the group. And some of the things that you did was play uh, some music. Um, yeah. You're a uh, you're a musician. Tell us a little bit about a little bit about that, and whether you've noticed any change yes. from being alcohol free with your music. Yeah, look, uh, you know, yeah, I have James, and I don't want this to seem like everything's so fantastic now. But <laughs> you know, the clarity is there, memory is coming back. You know, a lot of those focus is is one of the things that, um, especially with music, that um, you know. Whereas I, I might have practiced something over and over for weeks, I could sort of pick up in a couple of days now, you know. I think it's just that focus and, you know, that memory and stuff. But, yeah, look, I dabble a little bit. Um, am I any good? I don't know. The jury's still out. But uh, I enjoy it because, you know, uh, when I sort of hung up the helmet from the racing days, I'd always been into music but I'd never had the time to do it. And um, now music doesn't cost me anything, you know. Um, and, you know, it just costs me my time. Uh, put some time into it, and um, I really enjoy sort of playing, and um, yeah, just that it's, it's it's comforting and it's relaxing and um, it's challenging. So I like it. Mm. You also said that you you've you tracked how much money you've saved as a result of being alcohol free, and you've also tracked how much time you've saved. What what are those figures that you figured out, or that you yeah? Well, yeah, from, from you know from. From uh, from the time I stopped, I think we're nearly we're almost at the four four thousand dollar mark uh, with uh, in terms of money saved, uh, which is fantastic. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is. You know, it, it really is to us. You know, being a young family, 
and, and not having a lot. So it really is, you know, taking, I think back now, taking four grand away from my family and out of their mouths I, and what they'd miss out on, I, I really feel guilty about that, you know. So um, in terms of hours, I sort of clocked up 600 hours. You know, that's just drinking time. That doesn't include uh, downtime because I'm hungover or, you know, that's actual just sitting there having, you know, spending four hours drinking a night, you know. So, that yeah, the hours are actually a lot more than 600, but that's, you know, it's pretty hard to quantify, but, you know, 600 is, you know, sort of where I, I, use, a, I use an app that sort of calculates that. So, yeah. yeah, that's incredible. So if we do, if we figure out 600 hours divided by 144 days is four hours. Yeah, so four hours mm. a day you were spending drinking alcohol, not being present. Yeah creating fogginess and poor sleep and lack of productivity. Not so at that's... home, yeah. Not at home with my family having dinner, you know, not helping my youngest with his homework, you know, all those things, you know. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, 600 hours divided by 24 hours in a day is 25 days. Yeah, it's not Consecutive, nice. like 25 days straight, not even with yeah. a break, you know, so... And that's only in four and a half months. So if we double that, or if we just just say it was four months, if we times that by three, that's 75 days a year, which is uh, 30, 60, two and a half months a year spent consuming alcohol. Yeah, I mean, uh, and when I looked at those figures, so, well, you know, in, what, what else could I do with those four hours? Those four hours I could learn more music. I could learn another job. I could learn another skill, you know, I could really invest my time in, you know, having something pay off, pay me back instead of um, flushing it down the toilet, if you like, yeah. So where to now, Russell, With in terms of your drinking and in terms of your outlook and what's next um, in terms of living this alcohol-free lifestyle? Yeah, well, for me... Um, Short term is, uh, you know, I got through the, the program, which is 90 days, three months. Um, my next goal was to hit six months, which, you know, um, I'll, I'll hit that next month. Um, once I hit that, then, you know, um, I'll reevaluate. Um, but I, I'm looking I'm looking at long term. So uh, I'm looking at going all out, you know, and just not drinking at all. Um, that, that, you know, it seems... Even at the point I'm at now, it, it does seem difficult, but um, I think I'm up for it. I've got through what I've got through, uh, through some pretty hard times in the last four months, nearly five months. So I don't think there's anything else that can be thrown at me um, that I wouldn't be able to, you know, I, I can deal with it alcohol-free, you know. So, yeah, post six months, um, I'm looking long-term to, to go alcohol-free. Um, for a good while, yeah, forever. So, it actually sounds like the moment that you quit alcohol was um, turned into the most challenging that work could have been. Like there was all this stuff that was thrown at you, and yeah. so you actually imagine you trying to deal with all of that stuff while you're spending four hours a day drinking and and being foggy. So, it's it's not like people quit drinking and all of a sudden life becomes perfect and that there's no challenges. You actually had more challenges thrown at you the moment that yeah. you decided to go alcohol free. And yet, yeah. not only were you able to handle it, it <clears throat> seems like based on what you're sharing, you were able to like handle it really well and 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 yeah. and almost you know thrive in it, even though it it feels messy at times, right? Oh, hundred percent. You know, and you know, I kick myself, James, because. How, I'm 44 now. If I didn't spend those, you know, a few years, probably 10 years, you know, heavy drinking, where would I be, you know? Um, and, you know, they say you can't look back, but um, I'm looking forward now. So looking forward to using that time, using that money, investing it in, you know, myself, investing it in my family, investing in our future. And, and I know that, you know, I'm just not the type of guy that can have one or two or, drink on the weekends or I'm just I'm just not made up like that you know and I think when you get to that realization of who you are and the, and the program helps you with that um your personality and, and who you are um it makes you ask some really tough questions about yourself 
And I worked out that it's just not me. You know, I, I, I can't be a social drinker. I'm, I'm all in, you know. So uh, that's off the radar for me, you know. Um, I'm invested in my health and in my future. Russell Belcher, 44, from regional New South Wales. Congratulations on uh, four months and 22 days today as we're recording this, but I'm sure by the time someone watches or listens to this, you'll be uh, considerably uh, more than that. And also yeah. just want to say thank you very much for your um, incredible positive contribution to our group and our community because you were always very supportive of other people. Um, not only did you ask for help and support, um, you also were forthcoming with help and support for other members. So I want to acknowledge and thank you for that and uh, yeah. wish you all the best. Yeah, mate. Yeah. yeah, thanks, James. I should say that, you know, it's probably well known that you've interviewed some pretty big names in your time, you know, um, and you still continue to do it. But this is probably one you'd tick off your bucket list, right? <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while, but you finally got me, mate. <laughs> yeah, I've got, uh, you know, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Lena Jolie, Jennifer Aniston, yeah. Russell Belcher, you know, that's, yes. that's, that's the top five. That's it, buddy. <laughs> Good on you, Russell. Thanks for sharing some time with us, mate. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Nice. Appreciate it, James. Thank you and the team. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US, but if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>